the front of the Greenland ice sheet. You see in the background behind them here. So Greenland, I think most of us think about when we think of the nature in Greenland, we think of ice because obviously there's a the Greenland ice sheet is this huge amount of ice covering most of Greenland. But along the coast, most of the way along the coast, there's a quite a large area of land. Um, for example, where we were, from the edge of the ice to out to the ocean is about a hundred kilometers. So you have quite a lot of land, and it's kind of a rolling landscape, kind of like northern Sweden, like just covered in blueberry bushes. And we were a bit late, so the blueberries were a bit dry and weren't too palatable. Hi everyone, my name is Gavin Kenny. I'm a geologist at the Swedish Museum of Natural History. Hello, uh, I'm uh, Will, Will Hyde from the University of Copenhagen. And this week we're on the west coast of Greenland, sampling sand and rocks that have come from under the Greenland ice sheet. So I travelled with a colleague, he's a, a British guy who's doing a PhD in, at the University of Copenhagen. So there's a lot of research at the University of Copenhagen working on the, the ice in Greenland, um, how it's melting, these important things for climate change, understanding climate change. And part of and his project is looking at impact craters under the, under the Greenland ice sheet. So he's been up here at the museum in Stockholm and I've been down in Copenhagen, so we work together um, on these samples. To travel to Greenland, is, it's fairly straightforward from Copenhagen. You can fly direct uh, from Copenhagen to a city town called Kangerlussuaq. And that's the one big airstrip in Greenland, so you can land big planes. So all the main flights from Copenhagen land in Kangerlussuaq. And that is the area that we wanted to take samples from. So we stayed in that town of about 500 people. There's some nice minerals. Nice. So here we are about 20, 25 kilometers downstream of the Greenland ice sheet. So that's off in the distance up there. And we are, Will has just taken a sample of the side of this river. And the aim is to try and see if we can see some shocked minerals in there. So some evidence of extreme pressures or temperatures that might impact, indicate an impact crater buried beneath the ice sheet. So the work we were doing there was mostly involved taking sand samples. So we had um, either drive as far as we can, there's not too many roads in the area, and then hike from the roads to get to, to rivers that we wanted to sample. So we just go down into the riverbed and just beside the edge of the river and take samples of, um, of sand and put them in bags and uh, bring them back. And then we'll, in the lab, we'll search for minerals that might have evidence of an impact. So it's all a mi mixture at the moment, different sizes and uh, yeah, material, but hopefully somewhere after we do some uh, separation, we could uh, find the key evidence. In terms of how hopeful we are to find actual traces from an impact crater, it's quite quite a long shot, I think, in this case. Um, another place in north northwest Greenland, we nice. people found what they thought was an impact crater. We sampled the sand flowing out from under that, and you see traces of an impact. But now we're much further south in Greenland, and we don't have any actual evidence for impacts underneath the ice. We, we know that they're probably there, statistically, but there's no direct evidence. So in this case, it's a bit of a long shot. Like needle in a haystack but we're not even sure the needle is there. Yeah, so sometimes research is like that. You take a long shot, you don't invest too much time in it, but if something good comes from it, 